James in San Mateo, California. Uh, every time I see that, I want to say Matteo, <laughs> but I know better. It's Mateo. And San Mateo, California writes to me and he says, Paul, you have a number of great videos. Why, thank you, sir. And as I've been saying the last couple of times, I know you're going to get sick of it, right? Do hit the subscribe button. I, I, I very much appreciate that. So you don't want to miss out on anything. And even like this, this great video. If you if you weren't a subscriber, you might you might have missed by. Because I know a lot of people just go, oh, here's here's a guy talking about this or that. I do these videos every single day, every day, and I answer those questions. So if you're a subscriber, you get to see everything, and you don't have to miss anything. Anyway, um, he talks about where we uh, discuss upgrading power cables and uh, interconnects and which one's more important. And another on an approximate ratio of how much most people should be spending on a DAC versus the amp or the speakers. Now, I'm looking to upgrade from a pretty decent system to a really good system. Nicely done, sir. If you have to upgrade one item at a time, what is an order that makes sense? where each new item will bring a clear improvement. My initial thought was speakers, amp, DAC, followed by adding good cables, power supply, and then everything else. Is this a reasonable order, or have I mixed up what makes the most difference? No, James, you, you got it, man. You got it right. Start with the speakers. Now, this is difficult. So let me explain why we start with the speakers. Speakers are the single most flawed product in our arsenal of equipment, right? Speakers, I mean, gosh, you know, we're lucky if we have one or two percent distortion. A product like this is, you know, is like a hundredth of a percent, a thousandth of a percent. And, and we stress over whether it's 0.01 or 0.001 percent when our speakers are two or three percent, one percent, and that's on a good day. And frequency response, all over the map. I mean, by dB, th these guys, if, if it's a tenth of a dB off, it, it doesn't pass. A tenth, right? Can't, can't get out of the shop. Speaker, nothing's that flat. They just don't exist. So, speakers are very personal because of their, their inadequacies, so they all sound different. And you have to decide what it is you want out of your system. I'm a big imaging freak, right? I like the grand sound stage, the three-dimensional holographic images. I want to turn the lights down low, sip a little glass of burgundy, and enjoy a concert in front of me that appears like the musicians are in the room. That's a big deal to me. I can't stand tonal imbalances and all that, but the biggest deal for me is that three-dimensional sound stage that I can create through good electronics and great speakers and good cables, okay? So all of that matters. But you may be somebody who, eh, I'm not too worried about that. I just want to make sure that it is totally accurate, okay? Well, those two things can be had in one speaker, but it's rare. So you're going to want to go here or there. So figure out what it is you want out of a system. Spend whatever you possibly can to get the best pair of speakers to get you close and then start working your way back because it's a chain. There has to be synergy within the chain, but you can have the best electronics in the world and a crappy pair of speakers or an inadequate pair of speakers is, is going to do you, is go, just not going to do you any good, right? So always start speakers first. So I think James has it. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. Do hit the subscribe button and I'll talk to you later.